girls as you have seen they are so excited to have this company to come and do their launch here at the Green Girls Sunday School. So with the coming of this company now it's going to inspire more our girls to study more in science subjects which deemed as male dominated field. So it's going to motivate them to do well in science subjects. Innovations are very important as they're encouraging us young people to be exposed to the science and technological world. That on its own is encouraging me to at least give it a try, showing me that I am more than capable, because back in the day it'd be like only those, those people are, maybe the people overseas are the only ones who are capable of doing science, of going far with technology. But this has shown me that even I am capable. Actually supporting this initiative as it provides exposure to our kids, uh, to the endless possibilities that IT has on our nation. For example, when I was growing, uh, when I was in secondary school, we didn't we didn't have such initiatives. Hence, the the exposure to IT was actually limited. We only have a course for 
computer in that sense? We are, first of all, the first uh, space technology startup in Malawi. We believe that uh, some of the uh, potential that are hidden in space science and space technology and engineering uh, can have benefits to a country like Malawi in managing some of the disasters that we have. At the same time, we can also set, send our own satellites to help us for many other things like national security, precision agriculture, uh, climate and uh, weather monitoring, and many other things. I got inspired the time I was doing my Master of Science in Physics in India. I was leading a team to deploy a payload. It was a laser payload in space. And uh, we really did come up with a critical innovation that is being improved to be mapping what we call space debris within the five centimeter range. So from that uh, primary experience I had in India, then I came to Malawi and I was like, I think there are a lot more use cases for space that can be used uh, for different uh, uh, developing development agendas for the country. And uh, this also uh, largely speaks well with the continental agenda of uh, the Agenda 2063 for Africa, where we saw that uh, in 2022, the African Union for the first time established what we call the African Space Agency. And to narrow that down to Malawi, even Malawi is working up through the leadership of uh, uh, MAGLA and um, other uh, uh, government officials uh, to say that uh, we need to establish uh, the Malawi Space Agency. Often at the times that we talk about the countries who have really developed within a short frame, but do we know that uh, initiatives of uh, awareness are very critical when you want a country to advance in science and technology? Yeah. So these youngsters in schools, they've got to understand what is it that space technology has, what is it that they are anticipated to study uh, in space science, and what is it that uh, they need to do in order to take a clear-cut career pathway that will lead them to become a profession in a space-related field. So this is very important because we are inspiring the next generation of space leaders. How can I become a space scientist, a rocket scientist, aerospace engineer, astronomer, and many other things, yeah? So let's talk about careers in space. The most famous and uh, commonly quoted profession is rocket science, all right? If you really want to be a rocket scientist, it means uh, you've gone beyond the average human intelligence. So for you to be a rocket scientist, primary thing is physics and then chemistry. Because as a rocket scientist, you need to understand how you can escape gravity, all right? which is so hard to achieve, so you need physics. And also you're going to determine which fuel you're going to use in your rocket engines. And then you're going to design uh, the rocket engine. And then eventually you're going to come up with some sketches and stuff, taking good drawing also behind it. So those are the sets of skills that you have to be looking at right now, moving forward for you to become a rocket scientist. So I'll go quickly through the list. Uh, you can also become an aerospace engineer. Aerospace engineering is in two categories, all right? It's in two categories. It is a general term that is used for engineers who are developing technological innovations that move through air and those that are developing innovations that move in space, all right? So if you're an aerospace engineer and you want to look at space-related technologies only. You're going to be called astronautical engineer, all right? Or you're going to study astronautical engineering. And if you want to study uh, things like uh, hot air balloons, if you want to study airplanes, helicopters, things that are used in the air, yeah? For thrust and everything, you'll be called an aerospace engineer, okay? So, we also have astrophysicists, okay? If you want to study the huge bodies outside the Earth, all right? Things like the sun, the planets, the galaxies, constellations, you name it, black holes, okay? So you'll be an astrophysicist. A flight controller, you see, when we are traveling in an airplane, we need a pilot inside the airplane, right? To 
lift off and then afterwards we can put it on autopilot and then to land we need a pilot okay but when we're sending a satellite to space the pilots are not inside the spaceship all right they are on the ground trying to send the rocket to space to deploy a satellite right so these engineers and scientists who are on the ground using advanced communication technologies to communicate with the spacecraft in the satellite are called flight controllers. So that's why every time they're launching uh, a space mission, you see that a lot of people with big screens are looking at things. You've seen that? Yes. yes, those are flight controllers. And then also biochemists, okay? For the same reasons that uh, we need living things to exist in space. So if you're a biochemist, you're going to understand that better. Finally, and most importantly, is that you're going to need materials engineer. You remember, I say that if you put on your uniform and now you go to space, you're going to die, right? Yes. So as a materials engineer, you're going to need to come up with the best clothes for space. All right? The best clothes for? Space. So if you're interested in developing things like space suits, blah, 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 you're in that category. At the same time, um, the electronic devices, these microphones, the PS systems, everything else cannot work in space. Remember in space, there's a lot of radiation, yeah? So radiation can also affect uh, electronic systems. So we need special materials for radiation shielding, all right? to shield our satellites and our um, astronauts when they go to space, all right? So with that, um, let's look at this video and end the presentation. Why is it that the rocket, when it's being launched, the other parts of the rocket, they are removed to the rocket? Why is it that some of the parts when the rocket is being launched, are being removed. So this is one of the things that makes this field really, really challenging. Because they keep on putting in the fuel into the rocket until it starts the engines. Once you leave the fuel to stay in the rocket before the engines start, some of the fuel will be lost because they're using very, very small uh, molecular entities right great so because of that there's some loss so they don't want to lose anything so they're constantly pumping in fuel until it's time zero the, the the engine starts when the engine starts then the fuel can be disengaged okay and the other reason is for security they don't want if there's any malfunction uh, the people in the flight controller should be able to stop the rocket before it starts okay so there are those cables which are transmitting communication and information to the rocket to check the status of the rocket right just before it starts okay make sure the sensors and everything are working perfectly what streaks across the night sky and sometimes leaves a glowing tail a comet or a shooting star huh a comet or a shooting star. Try what I try! Why do the people who go to space use to go there? Okay. Of course, you've added the spices and raja, eh? But yes, what's the answer? It's a rocket. Again? A rocket. For one try! Who was the second person to walk on the moon. Buzz Aldrin. Say that again. Buzz Aldrin. Try when I try! What is the smallest planet on our solar system? What's the answer? Mercury. Spark systems to also come in front and help with the presentation of the gifts. So we'll start with the form ones. Please continue. So you get your present. Yeah. 
Let's come this way. Next one, please. Representatives from SPAC, the Deputy Head Academics, members of staff, my dear students, it's a good lesson for us that from now on, let us start working hard that we can also try to come up with something different from what Mr. Dark has said today. But today, we are learning something different that through the science that we are learning in class, the physics, the chemistry, the biology, the geography, we can start thinking of solving some of our problems and start thinking outside the box. So we wish you all the best. Let's make use of the knowledge we have, used, we have taken today that we become better people and create something different, much better from the African point of view than from the European point of view. Wishing you all the best. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of my fellow students, I would like to thank you, our guest of honor from Spike System Limited and the, those people from Malawi Space Stars. Yeah, us as Lagoon Girls students, we didn't have a lot of knowledge, but through you guys, we have learned a lot. And I guess a lot of people here, they're having ideas on what space is all about. And I think in future, we might have a lot of astronauts from Rigoon Girls. So, on behalf of my fellow students, I would like to say thank you.